Hello, Renee Flamont here. The last topic of this week I wanted to go over is a question I get asked all the time as well, and how to get unstuck. Last video we talked about when we are stuck in the middle, in the thick of feeling like we cannot break away, we still want, want to spend time with that narcissist. We're brokenhearted. Yes, they devalued us. They're off with new supply. We're stuck in the place of all of it. And I can talk until I'm blue in the face. That is a place we all go through. Blue in the face, did I say that right? Or did I say blue in the place? You know, I don't know how to edit, so it'll just be there if it's an error. But how to get unstuck from your narcissist, there's a few things, you guys, um, that I want to say. And one of them is, and no one's going to like this, but time does have to pass. Time does have to pass. And you will be shocked when time goes by and you look back in. There's a few of you in the audience that we've discussed this through the couple of years with this channel. And we've said to each other, we can't believe how long we've come. I have some viewers that have been with me since the beginning and our little channel that could, man, I love that we're over 600 videos now and we have a loyal audience, but we talk about how stuck we were and how now we're not. And a lot of that is the passage of time, but there are things that you can do to alleviate the feeling of being stuck. And we're going to talk about those. Let me break that down. And again, the reason that I'm doing this is because it's, it's one of the things that I hear so often. I hear people stuck on their narcissist a year after even not even seeing them anymore. I see it happen. Okay. And I want to explain a couple of things. If you are doing no contact and you've left your narcissist and you're like, I'm still stuck in that place, but I haven't even talked to him. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. Everyone's path is different. How long it takes you, there's no magic number. There's no magic number. But I guarantee you that if you look back um, and, you, and you break it up by six-month periods or three-month periods or a year, whatever you've been away from them, think of it. I bet you're better off now than you were six months ago. I bet you're in a better position. And you might say, well, no, because six months ago I was with them. We just broke up, so now I'm in the middle of all this. Okay. If you're watching this channel, you've determined he has narcissistic personality disorder, right? Okay. So six months ago was a, was a better place for you? Are you sure? You were in the middle of love bombing and you were being um, duped. You guys know I've made many videos on it. I think that's the worst position to be the worst in the entire gear shift of positions that you, you go through with the narcissist. You already are aware now. I know it hurts. I know you're sitting in pain, but you are aware now. You're awake to it. You've seen bad things happen. Okay. So when you think back to, but six months ago, I was happier. How am I going to ever, ever, ever get through all of this pain? This is not a position I like. He's with new supply. My heart's broken. I understand that, but what I'd like you to probably try to start to do is only think of yourself. I can't, it's impossible, I can't turn it off. Well, that's when you need to do things to distract you. Whether you play music and sing and dance and an instrument, you binge watch a TV show, you make plans with your friends back to back to back to back to back, you take a walk around the neighborhood. If you don't have any money, you play with your dog. You walk around. The, there's a lot of things you can do for no money. I'm not talking about going out and spending money on dinners and such with your friends. There's a lot you can do that can fill up your time. It's like fake it till you make it. You have to distract yourself. And you're going through the motions. I know you're going to feel like this is futile. It's not helping me. Now I'm just busy and I'm still thinking of him. I'd rather be home in my bed. I've told you guys before, I give wicked permission for that. Absolutely. You need to lay in the bed, binge watch sad movies and cry. All right, well, give yourself a, a stop time on that. I'm going to do this for a week. But you got to give it a stop time. And when that time is up, you got to get up. And you got to distract yourself. Becoming unstuck from your narcissist happens in the course of educating yourself and empowering yourself against knowing things like it wasn't you. There's nothing you could have done. I get that question a lot. What did I do? We were the perfect match. Why would he seek someone else? I don't even understand. We were per 
has nothing to do with you. Their disorder dictates their behavior. You becoming unstuck from your narcissist is when your heart and head are going to match in line and you probably understand a lot about their dysfunction by now, if you've been watching this channel and others, I hope. And then your heart, though, is still in the feelings place. If you start to think, like I talked about on the last video, oh, he wasn't real. Your own pronoun, mine is he for a romantic partner. Insert your own to make the video your own. We always say that. Oh, he was never real. Well, it's kind of hard to be stuck on someone that you convince yourself and finally have your heart and head agree. Oh, he really wasn't real. Because that's how it sounded. I knew here first that who I had met wasn't real. But then once my heart caught up, it was a different thing. It was like, oh, you meant it. Oh, videos that I've been watching. You mean it when you tell me he's never going to change. Oh, narcissistic personality disorder experts. You meant it when you told me that they will continue this behavior as long as you allow it. It all clicked. And once your heart and mind clicks, you become unstuck. And education and empowerment had a lot to do with it. Me learning it had zero to do with me, had everything to do with it. There was nothing, and I know a lot of you, there's nothing you did. There's nothing more you could have done. So you put in your all, you thought it was going to be something, and now it is not. And you have a hard time accepting that because you really did feel like it was going to go somewhere. And you just had a conversation with your narcissist, maybe. And they're saying they're going to change and they're going to give you this and that. And they bargained and they, and they breadcrumbed and they made promises and you both set parameters. And well, guess what? Narcissist hates all of that. They don't like parameters. They don't, and they breadcrumb and bargain so that they don't actually have to actually have to follow through with anything. It's all false promises to get you back to be with them. That's what they do during a Hoover, right? And it makes you not, it makes you stay stuck. The more you go back and forth, you stay stuck. Those of you that cut it off and did no contact became unstuck faster than the ones that I've seen that kept contact. But I never tell you to leave and I never tell you to go no contact because I think it's an extremely personal choice. All of the videos that you ever watch, and I'm well into the thousands, but every single one, go no contact, cut them out of your life. I understand what they're saying. I understand that that's the, the best advice to follow. But I also understand that life is life and not everyone is ready to cut them off or cut no contact or leave them. But I am telling you that the more that you continue will keep you stuck. It will keep you stuck. For the year or so that I kept getting a phone call every month that he was going to come through town and let's have coffee, whatever, it was keeping me stuck there. It was keeping me stuck there. And had I not finally cut it off and said no more, you're not allowed to come here anymore, then he would still, I think, here two years later, still be calling me once a month and coming over. If I allowed it, sure. And what would that have done? That would have kept me stuck. So again, I'm not telling you to do no contact and finally break away. But what will happen is you will become in time unstuck if they're not in front of you and you don't talk to them and you don't look into their life. I don't have any way of, you know what I mean? There's nothing in common. He was an older man. He wasn't on social media. I have no idea what's going on in his life. And I don't care. It's a wonderful place to be talk about not being stuck. The only thing I care about is if he's hurting someone else right now, which his pattern shows that he probably is hurting multiple people right now. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. And that kills me for the new person. Because I mean... It breaks my heart that any person would ever have to go through the pain of, of this kind of withdrawal from this person, that place where you're just stuck. I had a client say, I'm sitting in it. I'm sitting in it. That's a great phrase to describe how we feel when we're in the middle of the discard or maybe you just broke up with them or you're in the middle of trying to break up with them or you're back and forth with the hoover right now i've done all of it so new people that have 
that you'd have to look up old videos, but I've done all of it. I took a long time to finally go no contact. I made all the mistakes. That's why I started this channel to try to help you guys. Okay. And through the channel, I was still going through it in the beginning of this channel. So I definitely understand being stuck in that position. And I know it's terrible. Remaining with them with a toe in your life or whatever, that'll keep you stuck. And I don't mean when I say try to distract, it doesn't mean go out and date a bunch of people, but try to do something for yourself to make you feel empowered to go with the education you're learning about with this disorder. And then empower yourself by doing an activity you like. Go get some endorphins, take a walk, and you'll become unstuck. But time, the passage of time is magical. And I just want you to know the six month is going to pass whether you see or talk to them or not. You'll be further along if you don't. Chin up, you guys. Have a good weekend. I'll see you Monday.